there are several things that drive this, that are driving this, this increased interest in uh, this food security. One of them, of course, is just rising food prices. Now you say, well, food prices have always gone up. Well, yes, and they will continue to, to go up, you know, more or less uh, with the coming years. But with the increase in fuel prices, with increased um, insurance, health insurance, also with the, the new Food Safety Modernization Act, some of you might be aware of that, uh, if you are growing for market and you plan on uh, selling wholesale, I guarantee you will be learning about that. So the FISMA or Food Safety Modernization Act, some of those uh, regulations will take place, be enacted this year. And guys, that is going to require a lot, a lot of oversight, you know, in terms from the government. The whole idea behind this from the FDA and the Department of Agriculture is to cut down on the incidence of foodborne illnesses primarily. Uh, you know, you see, hear all kinds of things in the news about that, but primarily uh, why, why I brought that up is because it's going to take increased uh, uh, amount of investment by the growers to adhere and to be compliant, okay? So that means they pass that cost of doing business, growing food, on to who? The consumer, right? So food prices are going to continue to escalate. Another reason why we see a lot of interest in growing your own is the understanding that um, at times we don't know where the food's coming from um, and then how it's treated. Now in the United States we have regulations, but let's get real. We, we import a lot of our fruit and vegetables from other parts of the world. And we don't have, again, all the inspectors uh, available to inspect every lot that comes into the states. So we, do a, we take a lot of this on faith, don't we? We trust that our food supply is safe, but there are instances where people have become sick for whatever reasons, either uh, you know, a, a, a biological, a, a microbial contaminant, or some other kind of uh, contaminant, such as pesticides. So some things to be uh, concerned about there that people are, again, aware of. So, hey, what can we do to eliminate those types of risk? Another thing would be the GMO. To my knowledge, there's not been one incidence of a GMO or a genetically modified organism in terms of our food supply that has caused uh, damage or injury to sickness to, to people. Now, you'll have all kinds of rumors out there to this effect, but none of it's documented. And I'm, it's, not the, my, it's not the point uh, this evening to get into all the science behind this. All I'm saying is, if this bothers you, then grow your own. You know, and again, that's, that's another reason why people uh, are saying, you know, no frankenfoods. You know, I want to I wanna make sure that my food's natural. Uh, whether you agree with the concept of GMO or not. So if that is your case, if that's your argument, then that's another reason to grow your own food. Terrorism. We often think of it in terms of, uh, you know, mass explosions. Now, obviously, this is Oklahoma City. One individual caused this, this damage. One individual. FDA, their emphasis for the future is food defense because they are aware that there are people out there whether they are in, live in this country or somewhere else, that don't fight fair, that are willing, if they have a grudge or they want to get back or make a, prove a point, whether it be political, religious, whatever, they can do mass damage if they know how to infiltrate our food system. And so again, this has happened before in the food industry. There's documented cases of this. Somebody goes, gets off track, and poisons a, a, a food source along the processing line, a lot of people get sick. Um, so, again, we have a lot of faith in our food system, but there's some things that people want to do to make that more secure. Again, grow your own. Nutrition. Health and nutrition of our young people. In Oklahoma, we're one of the worst states in terms of obesity, diabetes, and one of the best things we can do, if we're serious about the people we love and that we're in charge of under our sphere of influence, is to, if we can grow our own, we know how it's grown, make sure that we have plenty of good nutritious food, 
um, to feed our, our kids, and then we obviously know where it's coming from. And then <laughs> education. The, the imagination of a young person who becomes alive in a living garden uh, or is around you know, animals. That's why I appreciate 4-H and FFA so much. Uh, all those opportunities to surround yourself with the opportunity to see things grow and, and, uh, and die as part of the life cycle. It's very, very important. So again, uh, by getting involved in these backyard activities with our family, it's an incredible thing for education and appreciation of life. And then the sense of community and family. We're so disjuncted in society today. If we can spend more time with our children, uh, whether it be in the school or at home, in the community where we live, in the community garden setting, it's only better um, because we, we have, it's getting to the point where you know, we won't even answer the phone anymore. Okay, it's all text or you don't communicate. And it's, it's just really strange, but this is a way that we can get in touch with each other again. Oh, did I mention physical activity, right? There's nothing better on the planet Earth than gardening in terms of nutrition, nutritional health, cardiovascular health, and then it's all around uh, muscular, you know, movement type of health. I mean, you can talk to therapists, you talk to nutritionists, it's all combined in working the soil and eating the good things that come from the soil. Um, wow. Boy, we are, you know, I'm just so fortunate to be in this field.